welcome to Fulcrum Care Pivotal People. Um, um, we are talking to those people that are right on the, on the periphery of care in our industry. Very special industry, we feel. We're all very passionate about it, and I know you are. Um, what, we want to, what we want to know from you is we want to get right back to the basics and find out what put you in the position of now being the provider for, for successful care homes. We know they're successful because you just had a lovely CQC inspection at one, yeah. of, your, one of your homes. <laughs> Um, what got you there from, um, you went to school in, in London. That's right. You went to university in Israel. That's right. Um, where, you're, where, you're now, where you've been based. Um, you then started um, as White, White City up yourself. That's right. That's and right. went from there. Tell me about how you got to where you are now. I think it, it's a very interesting journey. Mm. Uh, when we started off, uh, well, when I set up the company, White City was there to establish a bridge for Israeli investors investing in the UK real estate markets. And over the course of time, uh, the, the work that we were conducting was more, I would say, brokerage work, uh, research, analysis, and so on. And uh, we were very eager to get our hands dirty and not always mm -hmm. provide that service for other parties. Uh, and then over the course of 2016, 2017, the market started to push us into various directions. The demand in the market, the equity market in, uh, uh, in Israel was pushing us in various directions. And we decided that we have to go into operating real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, operating real estate, things such as, well, operating real estate were really, I would, I would uh, uh, define that as a platform from which, uh, real estate being the platform from which an operation is, is, is being carried out. Um, and we dug deep into the various sectors, hospitality, um, student housing, adult social care. And then when we started digging deeper into the adult social care sector, we, we saw things that, well, to me, were, were extremely interesting. I mean, such an, uh, such an important market, such Absolutely. a vital market. Uh, with very little investment. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about real estate, but it's a, a cold sector. There isn't, you know, it's a, and to move into something a little bit more personal and a little bit more, uh, I, I would say, something that's closer to the heart. Yeah. In 2017, we started uh, acquiring care homes. 2019, sorry. We started acquiring care homes. And in 2020, I think it was, we set up Sphericare which is our operational arm, mm -hmm. and uh, today we own and run four care homes in the UK. Mm -hmm. so. When people come into care, on the whole, they're doing it because they want to care. Absolutely. You are, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm, I'm from, I'm an on-the-floor carer, really, I suppose. Um, you are as important to the care homes that you're running as those people that are in there doing the job. And I think there's, it's an unusual path you've taken to choose to go in that direction. Usually, it's a bit of a, it just happened. Right. You've obviously chosen to do that. Absolutely. Um, is there any, any particular reason why? Why? The, it, it, you put two hats. For you personally, I mean. Oh, for than, me personally. Yes. Okay, for me personally. Well, obviously, the business does push me in that direction. Yeah. Um, today there is more focus around impact investing and impact in the community mm -hmm. and for me personally just to have that uh, that opportunity to be involved in what I see is a sector with such huge importance but so little recognition mm -hmm. I feel that it's an interesting challenge, and, and, and to be quite honest, I feel uh, even honoured to be involved in that, in that, in that sector. You know, I, I, I haven't gone down the care path, uh, so, so to, to really be the front line, I suppose I've missed that opportunity. Yeah. At least I've got another, another yeah, way in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what fascinates me is I don't think a lot of people out there understand what goes on inside a care home. Oh, yeah. I always think we... Um, it's a bit like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. 
that, you know, you walk past it and you see it and you know some stuff goes on in there and it's a bit magic and it's a bit strange and we don't know quite what's, what goes on. Um, but nobody really knows until they get in there. Oh, and then uh, they see uh, the magic. it's a whole different world. When you first got into it, um, did, you have, did you have any idea what you were going to find inside the care homes? Not to this extent, no. no. Uh, my experience with care homes was as a kid, maybe going and visiting a couple of care homes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Jewish community, we mm -hmm. would go and visit care homes mm -hmm. uh, regularly. And I remember the smell. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And lots of people just sitting around sitting there. Around. Uh, I mean, this is a while back, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so I was expecting that. Yeah. I see, I see there has been some change, mm. um, but the, uh, what we see on the floor and what goes on behind is two mm. different, uh, yeah. well, it, it's incredible. Yeah, and I think for me that's a really important thing to have people that are, that are actually overseeing that care home, that own that care home, that actually understand um, what's, what's going on and what's needed there, mm -hmm. and, and I, I know we get that, we get that from you. Um, so what surprised you the most about what you see inside your care homes? You know, the, there were a lot of care homes which we researched yeah. uh, prior to acquiring yeah. the care homes that we, we uh, purchased. The first care homes that we went into, and we made it a point not to go, I mean, there's some incredibly stunning, luxurious mm -hmm. care homes out there, yeah. uh, which target a very certain market. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we have always made it a point that we want to uh, uh, approach and stay uh, focused on the main market, which would be a mix of of, of uh, self-funded but predominantly uh, uh, local authority-funded uh, residents. Now, some of the homes that we researched prior, I'll be honest, it, it, diabolical mm. storage facilities. Mm. You know, and I'm like, <sighs> I don't know if it's something at the back of my mind saying, well, my parents are getting older, you know, would mm -hmm. I put them, mm -hmm. or would I even stay here, yes. you know, if, if, if it were to be, and it's, it's just wrong. And, and, and in our previous lives, throughout our real estate experience, we also touched into hotels. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, what we've always kind of learned, luxury doesn't mean expensive, or it doesn't, you can create an environment with with what you have, yeah. you know. And I think that what really surprised me was to see these homes, some of these homes, like it's just somewhere to go and store old people and keep them out of the public. And that 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 I found that 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 already took me to a different level. And I said, okay, this is a personal mission. I'm really, I'm, I want to, I want to challenge this. I want to change this. Some of our facilities, stunning. Some of our facilities, they're a little bit uh, tired, I would say. But it, it, that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, yeah. the product is our people. Absolutely, yeah. And um, if we invest in our people and we look, we 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 learn to nurture our people, mm -hmm. then they will give the best care. Yeah to our residents and then it's a win-win. Yeah, yeah. I think the, um, the regulations, I know you've just had a very recent CQC inspection and that, was that your first experience of, of actually being on site during of CQC? Me being on site, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, how yeah. did you find that? Interesting. Yeah. And again, this is where I suppose part of me being somewhat new to the mm -hmm. sector, obviously I have a lot of respect for the inspectors and everything, mm -hmm. but I can see that the... Uh, uh, the people, or the at least the home, th there is an element of stress when they walk in. Huge amount, yeah, yeah. And that stress sometimes can be very healthy, yeah. but also it's like, does it really represent how the the, the home's being managed on a day to day basis? I could see that the you know it's <laughs> it's intense. Yeah. These inspections, it's mm -hmm. very intense. What we see at Fulcrum, we you know we do mock CQC inspections, um, and I think. What we're seeing very much is that the future, um, when the new regulation, or the new the new way of inspecting starts to happen in March next year, where we you won't be getting those intense um, um, days or yeah. a couple of days where the inspector's there all the time. What will happen is you will have a continuous assessment. Tell me a little bit about um, your your life in Israel, the care homes in Israel. Do you invest in care homes in Israel? So no, uh, we, all. 
all our operations have always been in the UK. Okay. Uh, we do have investors who have been exposed to the care home industry in Israel. Yeah. Completely different. It's okay. completely different. Uh, we have been uh, in recent months speaking to uh, to um, government officials mm -hmm. in in Israel. Mm -hmm. They want to learn from mm -hmm. the UK way. Mm -hmm. I think the way it's being managed in the UK is fantastic. Do I you? That's good yes, to know. yes, I do. Uh, when I say managed, uh, the whole the whole safety net, the whole yeah. network of how this all operates with CQC governing and and, and supervising. A basic standard with uh, local authorities, you know, taking responsibility of their citizens. Mm -hmm. These type of things is fantastic. At the same time, I think there's a lot to invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that what CQC is pushing for, uh, I think I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's about time, yeah. because there are a lot of homes, a lot of services out there. They're still doing everything on paper. Absolutely. Now I understand that fear from technology. I understand that fear from you know making that change, but if the regulator doesn't push, th these services are going to be left behind. You and the technology is already out there. Oh, absolutely. The yeah. technology is out there, yeah. uh, uh, and it's pushing. You know, it's pushing these services to accept that technology. I mean, with us, it, uh, I'll be honest. We, we, we're so passionate about all this technology and everything. We we are forcing it, but I can, we can already see mm. some of the feedback. Yeah. You know, we we we've, we've started from administration tech, uh, software through to now we're implementing various care platforms. Yeah. These are, you know, in, in the short term, yes, it, it's a lot of work to, to transition over to, the, mm. to, to digital. But in a very short time, we'll see the return on investment in these yeah. things with, you know, the carers having more time mm. to sit down and have a chat with and their And that's residents. what we need going forward. Absolutely. At the same time, it also lets the resident mm live his day Absolutely. without being disturbed in the middle of the night, being turned yeah. over and things like that. And, you know, we, we have to always look at, there's two elements that we always have to look at. First of all, to ensure that we're offering the best level of care mm. that we're able to, but at the same time, to let the resident continue living. You hit the care industry pretty much in COVID. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great time to join us. <laughs> How was that? Uh, shocking. <laughs> I think we were very lucky mm. to have entered just before. I think we were also very lucky at that time. I was still not based here in, in the UK. Mm. I was still based in Israel. So mm. we had that kind of balance. And, of course, yeah. And, and I, you know, we can say a lot of things about Israel, but uh, uh, the way they handled uh, COVID, I think, was, was extremely well. That's good to know. And we were able to learn from that and implement that into some of our homes. Oh, brilliant. Um, it, it was a shocking time. It mm. was a shocking time. But at mm. the same time, it also, I think it gave us years of experience Absolutely. in a very short period of time. Yeah, so. you, you did have. <laughs> so what about the future? We're looking to, to, to make some change in the industry. We want to change the, uh, um, the approach that care homes are offering within the market. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Very excited. Brilliant. Brilliant. Very good. Well, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for, for coming to see us and talking to us. Thank you. Um, and um, thank you for being one of our pivotal people.